Well, Tony, uh, you and I have known each other for a good time from our days at Kew, but today we're in Exby Gardens. And I know you know Exby Gardens from your various visits, but this is a part of the garden you, I think, have never seen before. That's right, Marcus, and, and I know Exby really well because of the amazing collection of exotic species from all around the world. You know, it is a renowned collection that everybody wants to come and see especially at this time of the year when the azaleas and all the rhododendrons are out and it is absolutely stunning um, and you're never let down when you come to Exbury and then you brought me down this new riverside walk and and it's such a surprise but I love it I mean it's and the great thing about it is that you can see our native species sitting by our exotic species from all around the world and the two the diversity of the two um, work really well. Yes, it, it does have a different feel to it and I rather like that, the contrast between the one and the other. And of course it takes advantage of the fact that this garden is situated right on the banks mm. of the Bewley River, yeah. which you can see behind us. What amazing views of the Bewley River, but, but also such a rare uh, habitat today. Um, it's, it's natural, it's native uh, and, it, and it's in really good condition and people can now see that and, and witness it by walking through it along a demarked path uh, and see what our native woodland's like. But at the same time, stopping in, on these beautiful oak benches and just looking at that landscape out there. So you've got the salt marsh and then this oak woodland that's like, it's almost like elfin forest when you look through. There are, all of them are leaning. I don't think there's one straight tree. And the ones that are straight are are, are twisted and bent with the winds that come off the uh, off the solent, and uh, and and I think that all adds to the character of this woodland. And then as you go into the woodland, the trees become taller uh, because these trees deflect that salt spray and that wind and protect that that woodland uh, closer inland, which is is amazing. And it's a, a unique habitat that we need to treasure, but at the same time, all be all be able to see and witness it and everything that goes with it. Yes, and one of the other things that I like about this um, view here is that we, we, we try and make a big point of the people who come to visit Exbury about it not just being about plants, mm. that we have all sorts of wildlife here. There's a lot of yeah. wildlife at Exbury. And if you look out across the flats here, you will see a lot of bird life, mm. uh, a lot of fish in the, in the uh, river, I know that, uh, and all the other um, uh, animals that you'd expect to see in the woodland yeah. you sometimes don't see in the gardens proper. That's right. I, th I think as we walked through this morning, there were signs of squirrels, badgers that have been foraging in the, in the wood chip path that, that uh, demarks the, the pathway. But the sound uh, of bird life, I, I'm not yes. sure how many different birds there are. And I'm not an expert on birds, but it's a huge number of, of different birds. And then I suppose as the seasons go on, you get migratory birds. We do. Um, lots of wildfowl on, on the marsh out here, deer. Yes, yes. Uh, so it, it's absolutely beautiful. And, and the great thing about this is, you know, we, we all associate gardens with flamboyant flowers, you know, different species, different forms, and that diversity of plants from all around the world. But we think that's all there is in a garden. And the great thing here about Exbury is the, this, this native woodland, which is, uh, is in pretty good condition uh, and there's a whole range of native species to see and, and enjoy as you walk through with interpretation about the the key the key plants that you that you come across as you walk through and I, I presume you'll uh, you'll you'll increase that as um, as it you know the, the interpretation as the as it's used more yes and t Tony you, you mentioned that we're here in the spring and mm. there's lots of color just a few yards over there, um, but what I like um, in these particular days in the, in the early months of the year is um, all the greens that we see around us are actually different yes. and, and, and they change uh, and uh, as you walk through day by day yeah. you get a different symphony of, of green colours, it's yeah. great. And people forget that green is a colour yes. and, uh, and how many shades there are of green, it is, uh, it, it is a tapestry isn't it of, of green? Tapestry, that's the yeah. right word. And, and the great thing about this is you can come to a garden, it can be full of people enjoying the rhododendrons and the azaleas, but if you want some tranquility, some quiet and some peace and thoughtful time, then you can come down here and sit on one of these and, and take that view in, in the background with, amongst these amazing, uh, amazing trees. And I should have mentioned, of course, that because we are right close to the coast, the Isle of Wight's just across the way there, um, the river here is tidal. 
Mm. So um, it, it looks different every time you visit. Mm. And occasionally, at certain times in the year, the river comes really quite far up, mm. surprisingly. It's, it's an endlessly changing and fascinating thing mm. to look at. And, and of course, this is a rare habitat. So um, you, you've got this coastal oak woodland that, and, and it's unusual to see oak going straight onto salt marsh. Mm. Uh, but here it is thriving, doing well, and uh, and it's something that we should um, that we should enjoy and respect and uh, and and learn more about. And by opening, by creating this riverside walk, you're allowing people to do that and witness and enjoy and enjoy it. and enjoy it that they wouldn't be able to do anywhere yeah, else. Exactly.